Welcome to the Dum Dum News Channel. I'm your host, Dum Dum. Today's episode is called Serious Sundays, so I'm going to go over a few articles on the serious side. Before we get started, please consider giving this video a thumbs up and subscribing. I'm going to place links to all the articles in the description so you can go and read the entire thing for yourself. The first person that we're going to discuss is Ian Omar, who you should see here on the screen. She is a member of the U.S. House of Representatives from Minnesota's 5th District. Now, this lady has been in the news a few times. She's said and done some things that are controversial, like the time that people were very angry with her for saying that some people did something regarding 9-11. And you know, that is a very touchy subject for some people and to just try to describe it as that was very harmful to people. There's also been claims that she's actually married to her brother and that is how she was able to bypass the legalities of getting into the United States. So that's another controversy that she's wrapped up in. But today she's in the news for a different reason and it's a reason that I think a lot of average Americans are turned off by the modern politics that we have. In this article, it says, Federal filings show Rep. Iman Omar's 2020 campaign made up nearly 80% of payments to her husband's consulting firm. Omar's campaign paid $2.9 million to E Street Group from 2019 to November 2020. In that same time, E Street Group received a total of $3.7 million in campaign funds. Omar's husband, Tim Mitney, is a co-founder of the political consulting firm. Omar and Mitney married in March after two previous marriages for Omar. So, you know, we're not talking about a little bit of money here. We're talking about $2.9 million and $3.7 million campaign funds going to her husband's consulting firm. I mean, to me, that just screams conflict of interest. So I'm going to go down a little more on this article. It says, Federal Election Commission filings reveal payments from Rep. Iman Omar's campaign made up the vast majority of money her husband's consulting firm earned during the 2020 election cycle. Well, of course, that's where all of the money's coming from. It's over $4 million there. E Street Group, which is partially owned by Omar's husband, drew in $2.9 million from Rep. Omar's 2020 campaign and $3.7 million in total political spending from other candidates. I mean, that is an incredible amount of money. And that's what we're seeing nowadays is people are getting into politics. They're being really controversial to be able to get into politics, the radicals, or whatever you want to call them. And the fact of the matter is, is they're just making a lot of money and getting rich off taxpayers. In this next article, I'm really happy that the Supreme Court has stepped in to strike down one of California's COVID bans. The article says, something has gone seriously away. Supreme Court strikes down California COVID ban on church worship. California churches will be able to reopen with limited capacity after the Supreme Court struck down some of the state's strict coronavirus policies. The decision signals the priorities of the court's new conservative supermajority to protect religious rights, even at the potential expense of public health. If Hollywood may host or film a singing competition while not a single soul may enter California's churches, synagogues, and mosques, something has gone seriously awry, wrote Justice Neil Groshish, a Trump appointee. Now, I want you to be really careful here because I'm reading off of Yahoo News, and Yahoo News, in my opinion, is leftist and a liberal media. So although they're reporting on something that is really important, you know, the freedom for people to go to church on whenever they want, uh, but Yahoo News is also throwing their little political bias in there. So you got to really read between the lines here on this article because, I mean, who cares that this justice was appointed by Trump? The fact of the matter is that people want to go to church. And yes, the Supreme Court is protecting religious freedoms, which I agree with uh, 100%. I think that they should have their religious freedoms. And they're also saying that this is a new conservative supermajority. 
Now, you don't have to say all of that stuff, Yahoo News. Just print the news, okay, which is this governor over there in California has these really crazy laws where they're trying to uh, crack down and oppress religious freedoms. And it's true. That's what they're doing because you can't go to a church. But, yeah, Hollywood could have their things, right? All of that craziness. Anyway, guys, what do you guys think? Leave your comments below. I'm a YouTuber, so this last article is about a YouTuber. It says, man is shot and killed while filming a prank robbery for a YouTube video, which saw him approach a group of people holding butcher knives who did not know it was fake. A national man is claiming self-defense after he fatally shot another man on Friday night in a suspected prank robbery, according to police. David Starnes Jr., 23rd, killed Timothy Wilkes, 20, outside of Trampoline Park. The two were outside urban air in northeast of the city. Wilkes and a friend were filming a YouTube prank robbery video when they approached a group of people with a butcher knife. Police in Tennessee are investigating after a man was shot and killed Friday night during a robbery prank for a YouTube video. Nashville police responded to the parking lot of the Urban Air Indoor Trampoline Park at 9.25 p.m. where David Stantz Jr. admitted to shooting 20-year-old Timothy Wilkes. Witnesses told detectives that Wilkes and a friend were participating in a prank robbery. The stunt was apparently all a part of a YouTube video whereby Wilkes approached a group of people, including Snarns with butcher knives. Snarns said he was unaware of the prank and shot Wilkes to defend himself and the people he was with. According to the MNPD, no charges have been filed in Wilkes that the investigation is ongoing. Guys, you, people are getting more and more crazy about the different pranks they're doing. And you have to be careful and you have to think about what you're doing because you can get shot out there. Social media is driving people to want to get social media clout to get viral, to get famous, and they're doing it in ways that are costing people's lives. And this is a perfect example of that. Now, I enjoy making YouTube videos, but there is a line that I won't cross. And going up to people with butcher knives for a prank, this is, that's going to get you hurt. And I see a lot of these out there, and I'm not surprised more people aren't getting hurt when they are rude and, and obnoxious to other people in public and they think it's okay because as long as they say it's a prank, it's a prank, everything's all right. But what they got to understand is that it's not all right and you have to be careful when you're out there. Well, guys, that's the show for today. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you had a great weekend for the Dum Dum News Channel. I'm Dum Dum. <laughs>